Hello everyone, I'm Kote. Today I will tell you five stories about gluten intolerance, celiac disease, and gluten-free diet. Many people have abdominal discomfort and stomach ache for years and they even don't know that they have gluten intolerance or celiac disease. They even don't know about existence of protein which is called gluten. This yellow small protein is gluten and wheat contains gluten. Gluten is presented in bread, in pasta, in pizza and in almost any baked products. Wheat contains gluten, rye contains gluten and some oats contain gluten. So cereals, beers, any baked products and pasta commonly contains gluten but rice is gluten free it's very important point rice is gluten free so what is happening what is mechanism why gluten can cause abdominal pain why gluten can cause much severe symptoms like anemia uh, like malabsorption and serious diseases uh, when we eat bread for example uh, gluten is break down into small parts gliadin and glutenin this small parts we get and sometimes our body recognize this gliadin this small protein recognize as the enemy of the body and it's starting production of antibodies against it and these antibodies fight not only gliadin but it also damages intestinal wall and it damages intestinal wall seriously uh, you can see here is this left is damaged intestinal lining and right is normal intestinal lining we have here villi and these villi are destroyed in case of uh, celiac disease and a much more milder form of celiac disease is gluten intolerance gluten intolerance have almost same mechanism but this antibodies production is not widespread and most commonly um, inflammation is only located into intestine and it's not widespread so celiac is much serious disease than gluten intolerance but gluten inter intolerance can have also serious implications and what is symptoms of this disease uh, they have similar symptoms both have abdominal pain both have abdominal discomfort it can be bloating it can be diarrhea it can be constipation fatigue joint pain anemia and weight loss sometimes weight gain but in case of celiac, celiac disease malabsorption is more common and dermatitis herpetiformis it's it's a uh, type of dermatitis um, which is developed on the skin and it's small itchy blisters uh, and they are watery but uh, they have watery composition and this is common characteristic of celiac disease uh, for gluten intolerance such symptoms like malabsorption and dermatitis uh, her herpetiformis is less likely uh, and uh, gluten intolerance has symptoms are milder compared to celiac disease celiac disease as a rule starts at teenage um, teen age but uh, diagnosis can be made only adulthood uh, the 30s or 40s uh, and gluten intolerance person may never know that uh, he or she has gluten, uh, gluten intolerance 
10% of population have gluten intolerance while 1% of population has uh, celiac disease and if we speak medically and statistically 10% of population is huge it means that one almost 1 billion person has glucose intolerance and several hundred millions of person has uh, celiac disease and maybe they will never know that they have such diseases and they have abdominal pain abdominal discomfort especially this abdominal pain can be more prominent after eating gluten containing foods but uh, it's in case of gluten intolerance but in case of celiac disease it, it the symptoms can be more prominent and it can be difficult to correlate eating a gluten containing food and symptoms it it, it can be more separately but uh, in, in case of glucose intolerance uh, the symptoms can be provoked by eating gluten containing foods uh, and now let's discuss how we diagnosing these diseases and what is difference these two diseases as you see they have almost same mechanism what is mechanism mechanism is that uh, our body produces antibodies against gluten and these antibodies damage not only gluten but also damage intestinal lining and other part of the body such as joints for example mechanism is same but gluten intolerance is milder gluten intolerance is more localized and it has localized symptoms uh, and also main characteristics is when person stops intaking gluten and he starts strict gluten-free diet uh, symptoms improved improved in several days or in several weeks in case of gluten intolerance but in case of celiac disease symptoms can last and it can need several months to recover now how we diagnose um, celiac disease and gluten in intolerance um, antibodies is important uh, we have TTG antibodies, uh, which is uh, which, uh, which is uh, uh, transglutaminase antibodies. It, it's TTG antibodies, and anti-endomysial antibodies is EMA. These antibodies are defined in blood. That's celiac disease. Uh, but gluten intolerance can also have these antibodies uh, so these antibodies are not specific for celiac disease it, it can be presented in glu gluten intolerance but less likely so it can be presented in uh, gluten intolerance but less likely and what can be what can be decisive decisive uh, differential diagnosis right how we can differentiate these two conditions decisive classical is biopsy if biopsy we have damage lining of intestine intestines that's celiac disease if we have normal lining of intestines here is normal is gluten intolerance so everything can be very similar except biopsy if biopsy says there is damage of lining uh, epithelium uh, in the small intestine is gluten in uh, its celiac disease but if uh, this lining is normal is gluten intolerance so biopsy is critical to make differential diagnosis of course uh, gluten intolerance uh, have mild symptom mild symptoms in many cases but uh, its symptoms can be severe also and um, uh, both cases treatment is same 
strict gluten-free diet. This is treatment in both cases. Symptom improves faster in case of uh, gluto uh, gluten intolerance and slower in case of celiac disease. And person may need some vitamins also and minerals because um, presence of malabsorption in case of celiac disease uh, or in case of uh, gluten intolerance. But treatment is strict gluten-free diet. And let's let return to our first uh, question, which was about if gluten-free diet is good for everyone. Because as we see, strict gluten-free diet is very important. But if person is healthy otherwise and he or she has no gluten intolerance or celiac disease, it's not recommended gluten-free diet. It, it, can, it, it has several reasons. Because uh, products which are marketed as and promoted as gluten-free in many cases are highly proceed and they have added sugars for uh, texture or for taste they have added fats and um, the nutritional value can be lowered and less compared to um, other food which are not gluten free so for persons who have celiac disease or gluten intolerance um, strict gluten-free diet is a must but person who has no such conditions gluten-free diet is not needed uh, let's summarize uh, our video gluten is small protein which is represented in bread pasta pizza and other baked products uh, celiac and gluten intolerance means that body produces antibodies against uh, gluten but these antibodies also damage our body it can damage our intestines joints and other parts of the body such as uh, skin and uh, we can have dermatitis from uh, gluten intolerance or celiac disease but it's more likely for celiac disease um, symptoms are abdominal dis discomfort stomach ache um, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, fatigue, joint pain, anemia, weight loss, malabsorption, dermatitis, that symptoms. Symptoms more severe in case of celiac disease. Diagnosis is made by, definitive diagnosis made by biopsy. If there is intestinal damage, it's celiac disease, no intestinal damage, gluten intolerance. Uh, also, antibodies, um, TTG, EMA, these antibodies can be elevated in both cases, but more likely celiac disease. Also, um, uh, anti-inflammatory and uh, anti-inflammatory markers such as erythrocyte sedimentation rate and um, C-reactive proteins can be elevated in both cases, especially if this is, is active. And uh, gluten contained foods are wheat products, rye, some oats, beers, cereals, pasta, baked goods, but rice is naturally gluten free. Thank you for your interest. If you like my channel, Please subscribe. Your support is very important to me. Thank you very much.